I love good cinematography. I think cinematography, as obvious as this is about to sound, is what makes film what it is. Good cinematography is feeling a sense of comfort, a sense of fear, a sense of sadness, a sense of humor, a sense of something, all through one shot. With cell phones and distractions, it's incredibly important, especially when we're talking about TV when you're not in a theater, to have good cinematography. Good cinematography draws the viewer in. It grabs your attention to a point where you forget about everything else around you. There are a few television shows I believe have done this effortlessly. Breaking Bad, Louie, and, as of recent, Mr. Robot. Before I go any further, I want to address this is all based off of what I've seen in Season 1. I'm looking forward and plan on watching Season 2 soon, but for the sake of keeping my theory concise, I'll only be focusing on Season 1. Anyways. Mr. Robot is critically acclaimed for its take on society, technology, privacy, all the good stuff. I think that it takes on such subjects incredibly well. But Mr. Robot is filled with more than just good storytelling techniques when talking about its captivating qualities. One of those qualities being the cinematography. If you've seen the show, you know it's shot pretty uniquely, at least for a drama. Don't get me wrong, I think dramas can come through with some pretty off-the-rails looking cinematography from time to time, but it's rare for a drama to come with such experimental and daring choices for shots at this level of consistency. With that, I feel it's fair to say dramas rarely come with the kind of audience shows like Mr. Robot are trying to speak to. They rarely come with characters who aren't actually people. It's these two things, audience and character, that explain why Mr. Robot is framed the way it is. When I talk about audience, I'm talking about everyone. When I'm talking about everyone, I'm talking about society. Mr. Robot is a show about society. While yes, it is technically about the main character, Elliot, at the same time, it isn't. Mr. Robot is about an idea, about a future. It's about the lives of others and the point slash existence of the reality we live in. It's revealed at the end of the first season that Mr. Robot is completely fake, a figment of Elliot's imagination that was created through the formation of F-Society. Just that bit of information proves that an idea in this show means so much more than a character. That being said, shots where Elliot is simply in the shot, not taking up the shot, leave us with more knowledge about the situation and his surroundings than about him and his own perspective in the situation. Same goes for the use of the shot with other characters in the show. Let me put it this way. Imagine if Mr. Robot were to be shot in a very conventional form of cinematography. I guess, before answering this, it's important to understand what conventional framing is and why it's used. Most dramas are filmed the way they are using the rule of thirds because A, it looks okay, and B, it keeps a sense of fluidity and allows the character and his or her emotions to be at the center of attention. Notice the only instance in the show where conventional framing was used at a consistent rate was in the pilot where we were introducing Elliot. Now, the thing about Mr. Robot is, given the fact that the show is, like I said, a show about society, Elliot's emotions and desires, while yes, pretty important, aren't the main focus of the series. And when emotions coming from a single character aren't the main focus, and one of conventional framing's main purposes is to enhance the emotions of a character, there's no point in using conventional framing. So now we can conclude that conventional framing is unnecessary for a story like this, but why was the framing they used necessary? When I talk about the framing they use, I'm talking about this. Tyrell's head being the only part of him in the shot, having only a sliver of Elliot on the right side, I mean I could list off dozens of examples, it's practically every shot in the show. This is where I believe Mr. Robot gives us a character that isn't a human, that character being the rest of the world. I mean think about it, there are multiple instances in the show where I've caught myself looking at a sign or a blind or some building in the background instead of the characters in the show. This idea is backed up by the fact that the first shot of the entire series, a shot that is usually supposed to sum up the entire idea behind a show, is a shot of New York City. For a show as smart as Mr. Robot, it's pretty clear that this is intentional. I said it at the beginning of this video, and I'll say it again. Good cinematography gives the audience a sense of something. Mr. Robot is asking the viewer what they feel. It's leaving room for us to express our own reactions and emotions in the given situation. The shots don't scream, this is the sad part, be sad, or this is the time to be scared. They're just asking for us to put ourselves in the situation by quite literally putting us, society, in the shot. Empty space is a theme throughout the series that is explained in this Times Square scene of the season finale of season one, where being alone is the only way to truly reach a conclusion in finding your own identity and place in society. Hence the reason an audience member might feel just that much more understood or involved in shots where it feels like just a character and a blurred out backdrop. These shots serve less as moving images and more as mirrors. The city is a reflection of society, and with practically every shot, no matter what the current mood, the viewer unintentionally finds that level of comfort, that feeling of maybe they are supposed to be here despite the fact that they've probably never even heard or seen code. Mr. Robot embodies the idea of challenging the viewer through filmmaking. It uses uncomfortable framing as a way of offering the viewer comfort in the terrifying world the show lives within. 
I couldn't know less about cybersecurity if I wanted to, yet Mr. Robot allows me to understand not only the characters, but the ideas it has to offer, and makes it one of the most interesting and also one of the most underrated shows I've seen in a while. As always, don't forget to subscribe, go watch Mr. Robot, and thanks for watching. Again, thank you so much for watching. I just want to drop a quick link in the description to a Spotify playlist full of a bunch of songs I like to write to. I figured I get a lot of requests for the music and the songs, so I might as well share some of those songs. So thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.